And you're still at Pottery Shop. I'm still Martha Doggett, and our guest is still Bud Reimers. Bud's showing us how he does his architectural structures. And we were just talking um, a while back about the fact that we, neither Bud nor I, took art classes when we were in high school. And I was very surprised to find that out about him, and I think he was about me too. And because of that conversation, he brought with him a pen and ink drawing that I'd like to show you now that he did some time ago. This is the drawing. And tell us about it, Bud. It's, it's a, a pen and ink with uh, pencil shading. It's a complete fantasy as far as uh, architecture, a complete nightmare to have to, if it were true house, to paint <laughs> and wash windows. But uh, it's, it's got Art Nouveau in it, and it's got Victorian pieces to it, and it's got some Romanesque and Roman all kinds of, of uh, fantasy uh, styles put together. Um, it's the, the kind of artwork that I, when I do draw, is, is I have a, a thing for architecture. Uh, not having any art courses until my senior art or senior year in high school, mm -hmm. the primarily the courses that I did take were technical and architectural drafting. Okay. So my background for that spills over now into my ceramics. Okay. Now that's that's a point that I wanted to make is that you you had a background or some a flair you know, for a flair mm -hmm. for that. Okay, <laughs> that's a good thing the way to put it. I was not allowed to take art classes when I was growing up because my father very much wanted me to be a concert pianist and I spent so many hours at the piano you wouldn't even want to know about it, neither <laughs> do I. But um, my senior year, my mom allowed me to take half, one half year of an art course and I knew, I, I, I was just all, all I wanted to do really. It. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And did it catch on with you like that? Yes it did, exactly. I uh, went into college and, and uh, majored in art and uh, then coupled education with, with that mm -hmm. and of course led to my teaching career. Well, do you believe that everyone is creative and why do you think that some people just go with it like that? I think there is a degree of uh, truth to the idea that, that some talent is, is in the genes. Uh, if, if your parents are, are talented, uh, the, the children seem to be a little bit more so. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, difficult to say, well, this child doesn't have the talent simply because his uh, motor skills aren't developed in, enough at the junior high level, uh, sometimes even in, in high school level. Uh -huh. uh, so as, as the person does mature, more artistic expression can come forward that way. Well, I'm sure, and you mentioned parental background and so forth, and you just happened to mention um, the fact that your father, what did your father do? It was an electronics? It, electrical what did I... wholesale supply salesman. Okay. And that sort of got you into doing something that, that another teacher told me I should ask you about was your Christmas tree. My Christmas tree is uh, a sight to behold. I wish everybody could see it. Um, it's about a 10-foot tree. It's in my home. Mm -hmm. It takes about about two months to put put up. It has over ten thousand lights on the tree 10, itself. Ten thousand lights. And anywhere from six to seven thousand under it, next to it, behind it, above it, outside. Uh, it's an electronic light show for sure. Uh -huh. There's approximately seven hundred lights of each color, and then each one of those colors is tapped into a a color organ, which pulsates that string of lights to a particular frequency of music. So the whole thing bounces and t lights up and you can turn it on and turn it off and everything is there's a big control panel with rheostats and flash buttons and I think there's seven strobe lights in it and there's rope lights that go around it and there's packages that light up from underneath that, that uh, um, are all on controls of some sort. So the, it's all set to a, a theme music and various kinds of Christmas music or Depending on the year, it was an Olympic theme one year. When oh, really? Run. Well, now, what caused you to get interested in, in creating in this way? I was born on New Year's Eve, oh. and the fact that my father has this electrical background, uh -huh. I was, for some strange reason, always fascinated with switches and lights and buttons and anything uh -huh. that moved and turned on and off. I see. And it's just an accumulation of, of uh, uh, a love of, of Christmas time and, and sharing that kind of, of thing 
and uh, lights. Okay. Lights. <laughs> well, Bud has invited me to come see his Christmas tree next year, so I, this year I'm really excited about it. Well, I wanted to talk about your buildings just a bit more, and we were going to attempt to get an, a view down this alley as we turn this tree around, and I'm not sure uh, if we can do that. There we are. We're looking down. Tell us, this building is separated, okay? And yes. Can you tell where we are? And we're seeing a cat sleeping on the monitor there. In can the middle, yeah. In it's, the middle. This, this is a uh, old, what period, uh, Oliver, merry old England type architecture. Uh -huh. um, very few paved areas. There's a, uh, a stream bed flowing here where most of the time was the sewage back then. Uh, a little bridge going from, from both of these structures. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> it is stoneware uh, with s some of the, the detail, the cat and the, the, the fruit bowls and the plants in the windows is, are uh, Could we just kind calc. of pan it around and see some of these little... Now there's a window shade in the window and we're coming up on little plants in the windows. And as we keep on going, what is this whole, the alley, is that a, the entrance there? Yes, that one of them. Uh-huh. I looked inside the windows of one of your houses and it had a total table setting. <laughs> it looked like someone had just had dinner or something. One of them I, that I brought, I think, that we're going to look at uh, a little bit later is, is furnished completely on the inside. Uh, Which, is it the one up at the top? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Is it possible to get a shot of, of this building? It sells groceries and deli, figs the, deli. The, the bottom floor are d various kinds of shops, and uh, then there's a, apartments on the second and third floors. Okay, I see um, in this build, right in here, it says fine clocks, okay? And I don't know, we can't really see inside this window very well, but there are little clocks inside this building hanging on the wall and sitting out. Okay, now what is um, up in, um, I can't, at the angle I'm at, at this moment, I'm, it's hard for me to see where the table, is this the table setting coming up right in here? That's a bakery, so there may be a, a, okay. a surface with baked goods on it. All right, and if we just spin this all the way around, you can just see all the detailing that can be done with um, proper time spent and Patience, <laughs> lots of patience. And the sh shutters. Oh, and here is a music. It looks like a pipe shop in there. It's a music store. It's supposed to be a saxophone. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> now, you were going to show us another thing. Uh, we mixed up some slip here. We tried. And uh, we're going to show how we got some of the stucco texturing, right? Mm-hmm. This, um, this is why you can mix slip. Um, we've just added water and we're going to try to get it to be a little bit squishy. Is that soft enough yet? I think so. I think so. It's probably not enough of it. Let's try this little lid here and see if we can squish some of it into here. All right. Here's a brush you might be able to use. Or anything else in here that you might see. No, I think it would be fine. I try, when I uh, am teaching, I try to get my students to use their hands and use their fingers. Uh, especially at the beginning of the course, they have an aversion to do that because it's yucky and wet uh -huh. and slimy. And uh, they get over that very fast. Do you know that's an interesting point? Is because when I'm working, with professional potters, if that's what they do for a living, they put their hands on the clay as little as possible. They use <laughs> tools whenever they can. And when I'm with teachers, they always use their hands. And I think that I've really noticed that. It's a, it makes a, 
a big difference, I think. You have to get the feel of not only the material that you're using, but the, the objects that you're making. Uh -huh. uh, and it's, it's just, for me, it's, it's the logical way it makes sense. Uh -huh. It might be because if you have your hands pickled all day long in clay. <laughs> that could be. It, <laughs> when it starts to dry, it's kind of crusty. Okay. Well, in about the 45, 30 seconds we have left, we'll, could you just... Well, all we're going to show is just the, the stucco technique, and it's just a matter of taking uh, slip and uh, stippling it with your fingertip or with huh? your, your clay tool onto oh, the surface. Oh, thanks for showing. Okay, we got to go for another break, and okay. when we come back, we'll sh just sh show you the very last thing with Bud Romers. <laughs> 